I'm always very suspicious when I see anything that's labeled as one size fits all, whether it's clothing, whether it's an opportunity, any, anything at all labeled one size fits all, because in my experience, one size does not fit all, especially once they've seen me, one size does not fit all. Right? In fact, one size usually fits none or fits one person and that's it. Because we're all so different in every way that one size of anything is not going to fit us. Sometimes when we think about communication, we tend to think, well, that when I come into a situation, there's one of two paths or a very limited number of things that I can do here. But the truth is, when we enter any communication scenario, we need to be thinking that there are a multitude of options and choices before us and that one size does not fit all in any communication scenario either or in any situation. One style or one type of communication is not going to fit every situation. Every situation is unique. One size fits none in communication. So we don't really measure communication then in terms of right or wrong necessarily, or did you do the right thing or the wrong thing in this situation? Uh, but and in such a binary sense, uh, we, we measure communication in terms of communication competence, right? So communication competence, it's not a matter of as simple as right or wrong in a binary sense. It's, are you a competent communication communicator in whatever situation that you're in? So let's define this a little bit and get into what we mean by communication competence then. So what is communication competence? Essentially communication competence is just engaging in communication with others that is both effective and appropriate within a given context. Now that last part, there's really critical too. within a given context, meaning these are variables as much as I'm not a math person. I oftentimes compare um, uh, communication to algebra in the sense that they both involve variables in algebra. You have, you know, letters or other symbols that substitute for a potential number that would work or could work in that situation. Right. And that, but that can change. That's why it's variable. Communication is much the same when you affect any variable in a communication situation, whether it's you as the communicator, whether it's the person you're speaking to as the other communicator, whether it's uh, the environment that you're in, whether you're in the supermarket or at a concert or at work or at home or whatever, those are all variables. And what's your relationship with that person? Those are all variables as well. So when you, when you change any of those variables, it affects the entire situation and we have to approach it differently, right? So every situation is in essence, completely unique. So that context is completely unique. So then are we able to then communicate effectively and appropriately within that context and, and change and, and adapt and adjust our communication uh, to the needs of that particular situation? That's what we're talking about when we, when we talk about communication competence, can we engage both effectively and appropriately with others in that given context? So, uh, let's take a look at those components then of communication competence a little, a little closer. First effectiveness. What do we mean by effectiveness? Well, effectiveness is not, again, not a binary type situation. It's not, you can, you, if you're enough, you can't just say I'm an effective communicator and have that apply to everything because most of us have blind spots as communicators. We may be more effective in some areas than others or in some contexts than others. Um, so effectiveness is a matter of degree. You may have a great deal of proficiency in, in one situation, but may be deficient in another situation. So for example, I'm, I'm comfortable speaking in front of groups as a public speaker. That's something I'm, I've grown comfortable with. It's not always been the case, but I've grown comfortable with that um, because I've put in the time and effort to learning how to do so effectively. And I have the experience in doing so I'm by and large proficient in public speaking situations. But, you know, and, and I'm proficient, I guess, in one-on-one -on -one as well. Communication, I, I do pretty well when I'm just one-on-one -on -one with somebody. But if you drop me off in the middle of a, of, of a cocktail party or, or a, you know, just some gathering, a, a get-together at a function with a bunch of people that I don't know that well or don't know at all, I'm absolutely deficient. I have zero social skills. I have a fair amount of social anxiety when it comes to those types of situations. So I'm by far deficient in those situations. That's an area where I can improve and have been trying to improve over time. Um, and then there are, you know, certain um, contexts in which I'm not proficient either because I don't know that area well, or that I, you know, I'm so strongly opinionated about something that I have trouble discussing it in a, in a reasonable way. For example, if we were to talk about, uh, is Taylor Swift completely devoid of talent? My opinion is absolutely yes. And most people disagree with me or many people disagree with me. 
But I can't hear that. I just don't understand how people are uh, drawn to that, drawn to her as a musician uh, when she clearly cannot sing past a couple of notes. Uh, and so, it, so in those kinds of conversations, I'm really my com my competence goes way down because I get so wrapped up in my own opinion that I can't communicate that effectively. Um, so. Uh, we, we, we vary in from person to person and situation to situation on our degree of effectiveness, whether we are proficient or deficient in those situations. So we need to keep that in mind in terms of effectiveness. Also, effectiveness implies a we, not me orientation. In other words, it's not completely effective if the only person who's successful in that communication is us. If we're the only person who comes away from that, that, that experience thinking, oh, that was a really good communication uh, experience. I, you know, we handled that well and I did well. And but the other person comes away confused or not really understanding or not, not having that same, that's not really an effective communication uh, experience then, right? It, it has to be a we type thing. Uh, we need to be concerned with the other person and what their goals are and whether or not they're um, finding this to be fulfilling and, and so forth. So we need to think of it in terms of um, we, not me, right? So um, those are some things we need to consider when we, when we think about the effectiveness of a communication uh, competence in a, in, a, in a given situation or given context, right? So the other aspect of this is then, of course, the appropriateness. You know, we want to be effective in that situation and accomplish our goals, so to speak, but we also want to be appropriate for that particular context, as we kind of touched on before. As, as we know, any situation is going to have rules, right? Think about any game that you played and or still play when you're growing up. There are rules, right? If you play Monopoly, what are the rules? And and uh, so and Monopoly is a great example because there are rules, of course, to Monopoly, right? There's rules about how how much a property costs and, and when you can buy and sell things and, and uh, when it's your turn to go and, and those types of things. But then there are also other rules, right? There are rules that are variable in a sense. When you go to somebody else's house, they may play where, where free parking means you get some money that's in the middle of the, of the board, right? Other people say, no, it's just a, a safe space to land. You don't get anything for landing there. Um, other, you know, so, I mean, there are different rules about uh, how do you go to jail? When do you get out of jail? What can you do to get out of jail? Uh, in my house, sometimes we would have rules where you, if you didn't have money and you wanted to get out of jail, you could do a stupid trick or something. You could do, you know, somebody would almost like a truth or dare type thing, but somebody would dare you to do something within reason. And you could do that to get out of jail, right? You could eat a you know mouthful of uh, something sour or something, and uh, and and then you could get out of jail. But so there are rules that that apply to the uh, universally to the game. But then there are rules that change within each context of playing that game, right? The same is true for communication. There are rules that apply broadly, right? Generally speaking, rules of society say you don't punch another person in the nose. Right. That's 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 usually frowned upon. Now, people do it, but but it's t typically frowned upon, right? But then there are other rules that, that, that change from um, situation to situation. Uh, there are rules, for example, rules for communicating at work that are probably different from your rules for communicating at home, that are probably slightly different from your rules with communicating with your group of friends and close friends, and maybe a different set for when you're at church, so to speak. You know, those types of rules apply for different contexts. There are also different rules for each person. Right. I know, growing, especially as a, as a guy growing up, I think this is a guy thing. We 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 were kind of hard on each other. We made fun of each other a lot. My group of friends did, right? And especially when we were younger, we had, you know, sometimes kind of mean nicknames for each other. But it's just part of growing up in that environment. And you, know, and you expected it. And it was part of the rules. But if somebody else were to say something nasty to your friend like that, boy, that would be time to, you know, you're, you're throwing, you're dropping your gloves and, and getting into it with somebody then, right? Nobody, it's kind of that rule, nobody picks on my little brother but me. Right. That was certainly true in my household. My brothers picked on me mercilessly, right? But they also didn't allow others to do so because the rules were different for each of those relationships. So we need to understand um, what those rules are for a given culture, for a given relationship, for a given context. Uh, we need to understand that those rules are different and what's appropriate in one setting may not be appropriate in another. We need to adjust and adapt accordingly. If you're going to have rules, if there are rules, then you know that there are sometimes rule violations. And then what happens then as a consequence of those violations? That's another question um, for appropriateness. What, what do we do when there's a violation of those rules? Um, is it intentional or unintentional? You know, if you're in a culture that you don't know, um, then then uh, then you may be excused and somebody may just need to educate you a little bit on that. Right. But if it's a, if it's an intentional rules violation, then there may be um, some uh, some uh, further consequences or some harsher consequences in that regard. 
Um, so we need to be aware that, that if there are rules, then there are rules violations. And we need to um, be aware that, that we may, um, when we violate those rules, there may be consequences as a result. We also need to understand that rules change over time. Not only are rules different from situation to situation and culture to culture, but they change over time, right? I mentioned when I, when I was younger, my group of friends and I would, would spend a lot of time making fun of each other and calling each other names and nicknames and things. And it was just all part of that group. As we got older, as we, uh, you know, got married and started having kids and, and my families and, and just have matured in general, that's not as much a part of our, uh, of our exchanges now, you know, we still, you know, give each other a hard time once in a while, but it's not nearly as, as rough as it was, not nearly, um, as, uh, you know, as harsh as, as it was when we were younger. Um, these rules change over time uh, based on different circumstances and they change from, again, from situation to situation, the rules are not going to be the same in every context, in every relationship. And, and so we need to understand that, that those rules may well change over time. And we need, again, need to adapt and adjust to maintain appropriateness as those rules evolve and change. One thing I've kind of touched on this a little bit, but one thing in particular we need to be aware of is that there are also intercultural challenges when we when we're engaging with somebody from a different culture, and uh, and that and that's a broader discussion. What do we mean by intercultural? Well, it's, we tend to think of intercultural as you know different countries uh, and, and people from different parts of the world, and that's true. There are different cultures there, but there are also different cultures within the United States, within our communities, within you know within our friend groups. There are different cultures, and so we need to understand. And what those are, it could just be that, that those people have a different interest than us and they may speak a different language as a result. For example, um, our oldest son and one of our nephews is are, are both engineers. And so they both live in that engineering world and speak that same language and, and they're in that culture. And when we get together at family events and, and those two are together, they got to, it's hard to understand them sometimes when they're talking, they're using this language and because they're a part of this engineering culture um, that's different. And so when we're uh, communicating with them in that context or they're communicating with us, they have to remember, oh, we don't speak that language, right? And so, I mean, that can create a different culture, even within our own family. So we need to be aware that these are, are different challenges and, and again, require adaptation, require us to understand and to, to make the time and take the time to to grow into those uh, understandings and, and adapt them accordingly to what is both effective and appropriate. So what can we do then? Yeah. How can we achieve competence in these situations? How can we go from being a novice to being a master or somewhere in between there? which of course will take time and, and take energy and effort and things, but there are a few things we can do to achieve competence. First of all, we can grow in our knowledge, knowledge of communication, and we can broaden our, our skill set. We can grow in what is an effective communicator and what, what does that mean? Uh, what is that culture? What is this relationship? We can grow in our knowledge of all of these things. And, and just remember that we are constantly growing as communicators and we always have more to learn. We can add to our skill set. As I talk a lot about when we talk about communication competence, you want as many tools in your tool belt as you can get. You can't build a house with just a hammer. Now, a hammer is a vital tool for building a house and, and doing all that, but it's not the only thing you need. You need a lot of tools in your tool belt to build a house. And just like you need a lot of tools in your tool belt to be a, an effective communicator. You need to be able to draw on different things. So we need to spend time expanding our skills, learning new skills, developing these skills, practicing these skills until uh, we get to mastery so that we can employ them effectively and appropriately. We need to increase our sensitivity. We can't just come in like a bull in a china shop and and expect everybody to adapt to us and our communication style and just, um, you know, expect everything to, to go well. Um, and sometimes I think of this like when I play video games, especially with our kids or, or my nephews and, and nieces and things, when we play video games that, you know, they're kind of shoot 'em up type things, Halo and stuff like that. I'm uh, constantly, the kids are referring to me as a tank in, in terms of playing video games, because I'm just somebody who I got a gun. So I'm just running right in the middle of the crowd of bad guys and doing what I can. And, and I, and I die on a regular basis doing that, but I'm a tank. Right? I just wade right in. I don't look at the situation or consider other options. I just wade in and start shooting. Right. So I'm a tank. That's not great for video games. It's also not great as a communicator. We have to be sensitive to these things. We have to adapt. We have to adjust. We can't just, you know, rush into these things and do our thing and expect everybody else to adapt and adjust to us. We need to be sensitive to, to the other person, to their needs, to the culture that they're from, to the, you know, to, to the context that we're in and all of these things. So we need to develop greater sensitivity. We have to have a commitment. 
achieving communication competence requires a commitment in to a variety of things. First of all, it requires a commitment to developing as a communicator, to understanding that we don't know it all. We haven't got it all figured out. We do have room to grow and committing ourselves to developing those skills and increasing our sensitivity and growing in our knowledge. So our commitment to being a more effective communicator. It also requires a commitment to um, other people and to, to that relationship, to our desire to grow that relationship and expand that relationship or to grow in our knowledge of that culture and be able to communicate more effectively in that culture, in that context. So it really just requires a commitment in a lot of ways for us to achieve this kind of competence. Right? Then finally, it requires us to develop ethics and to employ ethics. So what do we mean when we say ethics? Well, we're talking about things like honesty, respect, fairness, choice, responsibility. These are all components of ethics and communication uh, that, that you, that, again, when you develop your knowledge and, and your commitment in developing your skills and your sensitivity, you should, you should work specifically on these items as well, becoming uh, more committed to honesty. Uh, being respectful of others, being fair to others, uh, being uh, providing others with the choice and not not constantly uh, trying to manipulate or or push somebody into a, a, to our point of view necessarily doesn't mean we can't try and persuade people, but but understanding that other people have a choice as well. And then responsibility, taking responsibility for our words, for our actions, for our communication behaviors, um, even for things like our emotion. Sometimes we like to think of emotion as, well, that's something somebody else did to me. And the truth is we experience these emotions, but then we start making choices about that. Right? Well, how are we going to respond to this? What are we going to say as a result? How are we going to let this emotion handle us? Or are we going to manage the emotion effectively? And we have to take responsibility for that responsibility for our own emotions using I statements and not you statements, right? So we have to employ greater ethics and commit to learning these ethics and, and, and employing them vigorously as a communicator. So communication competence, again, all about effectiveness and appropriateness and being a more effective and appropriate communicator in whatever situation you're in, whether it's hanging out with a group of friends, whether it's at work, whether it's at church or home or dealing with your parents or whatever it is, we want to be more effective and appropriate in all of those situations, which we have to, again, realize are completely unique. And so developing the skill will involve being prepared to employ effective communication skills effectively and appropriately in any given context. If you have questions about communication competence or about anything else related to this area, uh, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you and, and chat with you about that there. In the meantime, I hope that you will uh, continue to, and, and as you have in just by watching this video, you've started to uh, develop your communication competence with a new understanding of what that means, hopefully. And I hope that you'll continue to work toward those skills um, that we talked about, right? Toward your knowledge and your skills and your, your uh, commitment and, and ethics and so forth to become a more effective and appropriate communicator uh, in any context to the best of your ability.